the obsessive compulsive behavior and the partial seizures have been around for a long, long time because I had childhood friends tell me of things that I did. I can listen to a one verse for 10 or 15 hours straight over and over and over and over again, a hundred times, you know, read the same magazine or just look at the same picture or a certain movie and a certain frame of the movie that I wanted to see. I, I have no explanation. I just know that to the outside world, you look like a raving psychopath. And I know my neighbors, some of them must think that. The obsessive compulsive behavior, it's like a calling, you know? Like I can be walking and see a, a drop of water on the counter and have to scrub the whole kitchen. It's like a... a, a a tap on your shoulder that you should go do this right now. Summoned is the word, because you have to do it right now. Those are the feelings that I have. I'd say by the time I had reached 16, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I, uh, I had this friend, a good friend of mine. We decided one night, we were drinking, that we would go over to this girl we knew, and, uh, she let Phyllis sneak through her bedroom window. So we was racing down this dirt road and uh, come up on this bridge. And he went off of the bridge. The steering wheel had smashed into his chest. Blood was coming out of his mouth. And then he got quiet. He turned kind of white looking. And I, I remember I had a bottle of whiskey and I sat there drinking that whiskey and talking to him basically all night till the sun came up. Well, one of my uh, fears, and has been, the fear of, uh, of dying alone in the gutter, it's sort of like a roadkill you see on the side of the, the highways. There would be no interest in my dying, and uh, that seems pretty pathetic to me. I've got to change my behavior. If I could get to be a better person, I could at least make friends, real friends. And uh, I, I haven't felt that in a long time, if ever. We used to go down to the beach every summer, and I'd play with my inner tube. I'd go out into the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and I'd let the tide roll me in, and it was so fun. I, I'm, I'm obsessed with inner tubes. I got a room full of inner tubes and tires. I even go out on the streets and pick up old ones that have holes in them. I give them a good home with me. I'm very sentimental over tires and tubes. Why, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's part of my childhood days and part of my mental illness. Sometimes it gets to where I can't afford to buy food. One summer, I was so poor I had to buy dog and cat food because I had run out of food stamps. I feel that some people haven't been kind to me in the past. Nobody's ever really liked me. When I was in school, they always told me I was ugly because my hair was not brushed right. And I don't know, for some reason, I have a bitterness in me. And I put myself down because I have low self-esteem. Now, I just get depressed and, and, uh, and I lock myself in my apartment. In January, on my birthday, I bought me two great big old tractor tires, antique tractor tires. They have r rusted rims, rusted wrought iron rims and wheels, and the tires are in still good condition. I don't know, I just feel comfortable with them. I feel safe. Because if I run across some people that don't like me, then to hell, to heck with them. I make my own friends by making friends with inner tubes and tires. I am homeless right now. And I consider myself very well educated. Mental illness discriminates no one. You could be here too if you're not careful. I have a mental illness condition due to
to my chronic pain and due to post-traumatic stress disorder, panic attacks. I've always had the finer things in life. I have lived in the Ritz-Carlton. I've lived in the most beautiful embassies in, in Italy and France. I've skied Switzerland. Then I was so proud and so young, so full of hope, and now it's so empty. I, I do blame myself. I put myself in the position to become pregnant. And I didn't listen to my instincts. And I allowed two men to put me in a gray area. And I will never let it happen again, ever. So help me God. I understand rage emphatically. And it can consume you. It can kill you too. I think the only time that I can truly escape from the hell and the, the hell and the torment of everything I feel was when I used to go horseback riding and I felt like whatever was chasing me couldn't catch me. And it's not like me to run. I'll attack first, and I don't have that now. I feel trapped by everything around me. It's like being in jail, and there's no way out. And you can be as strong as you want to be. Somehow I'll find my way out, I hope. If, if, if self-control is sanity or something, then uh, there are limits to the sanity of everybody. I think one response to the mentally ill is, is just fear, fear for ourselves. Maybe there's empathy in that fear. You know, I've, I've, I'm, I've certainly been diagnosed as an addict and I've also been diagnosed uh, with obsessive compulsive disorder. I guess my fundamental experience of this for myself is I am not in control of my own thinking. It is really an intolerable place to live, you know. It's really, really hard. And, it, it, I mean, it could easily bring me to the place of not wanting to live at all. I tend to respond to what we would think of as natural objects like pebbles and trees. Like, I have a really intense reaction to trees, and I love trees. And there, there's a plum tree in my backyard that I... Uh, that I really love and I just kind of like, you know, watch it go through its seasons and uh, there's something about its shape that is just, uh, I find very compelling.